Zoran makes a cloud-based database, and why would you need that? Well, we're going to find that out, but we're also going to find out what they're doing for the Rackspace cloud, because last time we talked with them, they were on uh, some competitor. <laughs> Anyways, Zoran right now, and uh, I'm going to learn all about cloud databases. Who are you? Hi, I'm Razi Sharir. I'm the CEO for Surround. We're the cloud database as a service for clouds. And we've been around for quite a while, and we're glad to be here and uh, to serve Rexpace now as of a few months uh, with the GA product. Very cool. What, so why do we need a database in the cloud? Uh, you know, isn't MySQL good enough? I can run that on a cloud server, right? So MySQL is a great database. Actually, uh, that's what we are offering uh, on our end as a service from a different angle. Uh, MySQL, on, in and on its own on the cloud, has uh, some, li some uh, limitations that would imply that a database running out there in the cloud would not necessarily be as efficient and effective both on the cost and on the, and on the operations mode. So if you're running your application in the cloud and uh, get hit by uh, super high-end traffic or a campaign goes through the roof, Typically what happens is that the database, if it's not properly configured and well built to uh, address this type of needs, it could uh, face some crashing and downtime. Actually every time you need to scale out a MySQL database or a general SQL database, uh, it typically uh, implies downtime because you need to move from a smaller instance to a larger instance or to a larger database. What and then you guys do that all programmatically, all right. automatically? And wh what we offer, we address exactly that. Uh, our uh, core IP that comes in from our previous uh, agenda around telecom, uh, communications, internal clouds, and databases enables us to run underneath the hood, in a sense, a NoSQL database, whereas on the front, we maintain the MySQL taxonomy, so we enjoy the, the best of both worlds. We enjoy the scalability, scaling out, adding nodes on the fly without downtime, and enabling throughput and traffic to go up and down as, as much as they need to, whilst on the other hand, maintaining a super highly available database and uh, not giving away any taxonomy on the SQL. That's, that's really cool. How, how do startups or uh, companies pay for this? Uh, the startups and companies that run on our service, they log into our service on our website, they register. It takes you uh, probably less than a minute to be up in the air with a live database. It will be a live MySQL database for all, all intended purposes. You can use any tools or anything you've used before on any other previous MySQL incarnations on that as is. Nothing has changed, no single line of code change. And uh, they can pay for it in three ways. One is uh, what we went to market with a few months back, which is the pay-per-use model, uh, what, which we thought would be the best uh, fit for a cloud model, but in fact turned out to be somewhat uh, a concern for our end users because they weren't really sure what the, c what the cost would be at the end of the month because they didn't know what the, the size of the database would be, how much traffic the application would generate, and this and that. So they came back to us and said, okay, why don't you guys offer a mid-tier that would be a framed, fixed tier, all you can use within a given set of costs so that you know at the beginning of the month what the invoice at the end of the month would be. And the last one would be the free version. So the free version and the fixed years, which I just described to you, we just announced two weeks, uh, uh, two, be two weeks back, and ever since we're just booming through the roof. I mean, um, I the pickup and, and, uh, and adoption is simply enormous. Why, why would you stick with MySQL anymore? Uh, MySQL Anywhere would be a, a good choice to begin with. Everybody who's using MySQL eventually, hopefully, will land on my plate and become my uh, uh, customer. Uh, we launched on Rackspace, so I'm, I'm glad to report that the Rackspace uh, go-to-market go to is perfectly working for us, and uh, we've been very happy customers of, of Rackspace, and the Rackspace customers are very happy customers of Surround, and uh, actually we're seeing a very uh, uh, unique pattern of, of uh, a joint agenda where the customers who come to Rackspace and appreciate the, the fanatic support which you guys go by, appreciate the support that we provide, because we provide support in SLA because nobody else does it. So uh, we give it for no additional cost. You can pick up the phone or send us an email and we would uh, either reply to the email immediately or solve your problems on the phone. So th they find this as, as a very appealing approach for service. We absolutely do, because if we can't get answers from uh, vendors who do business with us, we can't provide support either. Uh, tell me about the competitive landscape, because I know Amazon has a database, a cloud-based database. How do you compete with that? So Amazon has uh, their RDS, which is the, the most, uh, uh, the closest thing to what we do. The, the, the limitation that they uh, face would typically be around the same limitations that any MySQL limitation would have. It runs in a single instance, and if you need to change from one instance to another, it typically uh, uh, implies downtime. It does not necessarily have to be this way, but it's very tedious and, 
and long work to work around it. Every time you change anything, it requires ad adaptations to the application, so DevOps becomes a major burden. It's not that CAPEX effective, and it's not that OPEX sufficient. So either way, I think that our offering is, is different from what they offer. Uh, they're the largest gorilla in the market, so I can't attest to it, but uh, many of our users who run on, on our service in, in Amazon, e actually even many of our users who came to Rackspace following our service from Rackspace are frustrated Amazon users who have had enough of the Amazon downtimes, if you recall, a couple of months back, Amazon Ireland was down for two weeks, and a few months earlier did that. DBS and Chelada, they took their service down for uh, almost a month. Uh, actually, in fact, we were the only ones who kept on running while their services were down. So wow. uh, and, we see. We don't like to talk about downtown because that's like a bad that's karma in the, no in the no. hosting business no because no. Uh, can Surround be used for large scale, huge things? Uh, yes. Definitely, yes. Actually, Surround comes in with this technology from the telco environment. So keep in mind that our previous offering was in a telco place where you wouldn't imagine picking up the phone and not getting a dial tone, right? So we employed the exact same technology that was adopted for a public cloud usage into the public cloud. So we can offer anywhere from very small startups joining our free service all the way to the super high-end, super scalable, uh, super large databases and high-end OLTP use cases. So we see a whole slew of users and a whole spectrum of users the only use case we won't address would be uh, business intelligence and data warehousing because of the nature of the database is built. Our database is distributed, so it doesn't make sense to do full table scans if you need to do some real number chewing. But anything around OLTP use case, which is the standard commercial application, we would be able to uh, uh, provide very good performance in a very uh, a solid, sustained line. Very cool. Since I talked to you, uh, what, a year, a year and a half, two years ago, something like that, what's been happening in your business? Uh, so we've been growing uh, significantly with the user base and distribution. We went to Europe. Uh, we are now in Rackspace. We would soon expand on Rackspace worldwide in other places as well. <coughs> we in, uh, introduced our service from a platform as a service point of view on Heroku, and we're exposing a few other of those that would offer additional languages and flavors out of the market. So within a few months, I'd say probably up to 12 months, you'll see us uh, offered anywhere you throw a dime in the world. You'll get service from Surround, whether you get it from us directly, branded Surround, or branded by others. Uh, it might even be a, a branded Rexpress on the front end. Do you have any examples of customers that have used you, and, and what's the customer growth been like? Uh, the customer growth has been enormous. Well, I mean, we have in, uh, in excess of 10,000 users on our system. And these users range from a very wide spectrum, as I said earlier, very small ones to very large ones. Uh, we respect the cloud model, so oftentimes we don't know who the customers per se are. They log into our service, they put in credit card, and that's as far as we know about them. We don't know what they do or how they do it because it's a service. We're not allowed to look into it or to see what is that they do. But we have very good feedback, and if you look at, uh, at the last three to four months tweets that have been around our service, you'll see how our users are super happy and, and super excited about the service being so simplistic and, and, and robust despite the fact that cost-wise it's not positioned as the top of the line high-end users. Very cool. Um, what are you seeing happen in the marketplace? Because you, you know, the database is generally the, the center of the whole <coughs> architecture of, of people's, of companies, right? What are you seeing else, what else are you seeing happen in the cloud world? So what we're seeing is, uh, uh, as opposed to what we thought a few months ago, that the enterprises are right around the corner getting on the cloud, it seems like they're taking the time. They're not picking up on the cloud technologies as fast as we would have opted they would. Uh, and even those who are looking at the cloud would not necessarily be using uh, MySQL per se. Some of them uh, do consider Postgres. Uh, most of the users who have been, we have seen before using uh, big data and NoSQL databases have moved away from the cloud and into, back into the private data centers. And actually that's not surprising because when you consider the amount of data that they are chewing on, by the time they just load the data to the cloud, uh, I mean, it will be too little too late. That's why it makes sense for them more to work in private cloud. So we don't see them anymore in a public cloud. I'd imagine that within a year or two years, we'll see more and more adoption and usage of the mid-segment and higher in the cloud, which would typically get translated to enterprise users. Yeah. I don't anticipate any high-end, super high-end finance, insurance, and, and security companies getting to the, to the cloud, not because of security, but because of the, the large segment of the actual data that needs to be moved around and chewed. Do you see then uh, like OpenStack is going to be important? Mm -hmm. And are you th thinking about how to work with OpenStack so that mm -hmm. these enterprises can still host these cloud-based systems inside their own firewalls? Definitely, that's a great question. What the part of the offering that we're working on that would be available at the later stages here would be the hybrid setup. So you can run your database in multiple locations. This is something that we can pull together today because of our distributed nature, the way we built underneath the hood. 
And this would cater specifically to this particular use case where you have an enterprise that runs some of the database locally in-house, and some of the databases would benefit from running in a public cloud, <coughs> where public cloud could be any VPN anywhere else. It doesn't necessarily need to be a pure public cloud per se. And uh, we would see these use cases coming in, <coughs> sorry, more and more over the next year and so. Uh, we don't quite see them coming in this year immediately. I okay. think it's a little further out. OpenStack is a key player in this area, and uh, we're seeing lots of adoption around OpenStack. Actually, we, we're part of the OpenStack, and we started working towards the OpenStack API so that when it becomes adopted and, and, and uh, you know, one of the de facto standards, we would already be built into the API, so nobody would have to do anything development-wise to get our service. Yep. While we're starting to deploy, we just announced in a press conference today that uh, we're building our own technology and we're delivering it on built on OpenStack. So Good. it's very exciting here. Anything else I need to know what's going on? Uh, no, I think you probably covered it, most of it, and we're really glad, glad to be on, on Rackspace uh, and using on Rackspace uh, premises and uh, quite a few more interesting things coming in the next year, so we'll probably see you again. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming out and talking about what's going on in the, the database world inside cloud. My pleasure.